you cannot, for example, take a great prophet, even like John the Baptist, and equate him with Moses in terms of status, the impact, and the spread of his message. That's why Jews, Christians, and Muslims also revere Abraham so much, because again, he's regarded as the father, but not the first prophet of monotheism. Monotheism started with Adam, but perhaps he is the, the greatest figure in the spread and propagation and dissemination of the concept of monotheism. So in other words, as humans, we don't boast. We said we believe in all of them as Allah. We don't make distinction. But if Allah chose, he's the creator to assign some prophets greater role than others, but all of them to be respected and accepted. Now, some people might raise this question. You keep talking about the prophet being a messenger to the whole of humanity. However, by the way, I'm raising some questions that might be provocative even to Muslims. I'm, I'm teaching presently a course on the Quran, a credit course at St. Mary's. And sometimes I challenge people, including Muslims, by making statements that might sound too provocative to them. Okay? I sometimes use it, but it appears there is contradiction in it. How do you explain that? Well, that's my style. Anyway, sometimes academics speak a little different from preachers. Um, they say, but if you look into the Quran, in fact, there's something that may contradict your claims that you mentioned earlier of universality of the message of the Prophet sent to all of humanity. And they have ground for that statement initially. Because in the Quran itself, you find an ayah, ayahs or verse, that tell the Prophet, Allah command him, وَأَنْذِرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ Warn or invite to submission to Allah, your close relative. And then in another, it says, and maybe historically a little later, it says, so that you may warn the mother of villages, meaning to Mecca, meaning Mecca, and its surroundings. And then when the Prophet was successful, that's what some Orientalists you know, say, the Prophet, as if he's made himself a Prophet, said made So in one hand, he began with his family, but when he find, found some success, he expanded his vision and proclaimed himself to be a Prophet for Mecca and its surrounding. But when there was greater success, later on, he said, oh no, guys, I am the messenger of all humanity. Well, I, I'm not going to discuss the issue now of trying to indirectly accuse the Prophet, actually, of not telling the truth. That he made himself rather than receiving the revelation in the same way that Moses, Jesus, Abraham <coughs> received the revelation. I'm not discussing that. That takes about one-third of my course, one-fourth. How do we know who wrote the Quran, who is the author, what evidence, or by way of negation, affirmation? Well, that's an enjoyable and very good thought and discussion provoking, I find, in my class. I enjoy it very much, provoking Muslims even in the class to respond. But aside from this, which of course is a, a contradiction with his profile as a person who is absolutely truthful to the point that his people gave him the nickname, even before he was called the trustworthy al Amin. So aside from that point, there is an implication here, again, that the Prophet was making his own message and its expansion as he became more successful. We have heard even more recently, in the last think, what, one year or two, some people in high religious positions uh, who claim that when you look at the Quran, and related to the historical context. You know the Quran was revealed over a period of 23 years, which is the whole ministry or mission of the Prophet. The first 13 years were in Mecca, where Muslims were severely and brutally persecuted, just like the Egyptians by the, the, the pharaohs, our contemporary pharaohs, all right? Uh, so they, they were persecuted very brutally, and then, of course, the other 10 years, the remaining 10 years, were in Medina, where people were more responsive to his message when Islam spread. 
and they were free to practice, and he became actually, very shortly, the agreed or accepted head, not only head of the community, Muslim community, but the head of the whole of the community, or city-state of Ali. And some of those religious figures made a claim, and others also, or they copying from others who are equally uninformed or misinformed, they said that in the Meccan Quran, because Muslims were persecuted, the Quran was keeping nice, you know, about peace, and the mission is only to him, him and his family and his city. But once uh, he moved to Medina, became a head of a state, now the Quran start speaking about war and fighting and this and that, an expansion of the message to the whole world. You know what they're missing? First of all, they're missing the fact, I say fact, not opinion, that among the earliest revelation of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, like Surah Al-Furqan, the 25th Surah, that no scholar that I know of argues that this was revealed during the persecution period in Mecca, in Mecca. And it speaks about the Prophet being sent to the whole world, Al-Alameen, worlds actually, the world of human, the world of uh, engines, the world of animals, the world of plantation, Al-Alameen, actually it's not Alam, the precision in the Quran indicates there's more than one word that benefited from the mercy that Allah has given to humanity or bestowed through Prophet Muhammad, peace That destroys the whole thing. Because that was a persecution period that I speak about. I, the second point that is being missed in this is that there is a difference between the validity of da'wah or its scope and the steps, the stages it has to take. All prophets' message actually is valid for all humanity. But the mandate differed with the mandate to Prophet Muhammad Islam for the whole world. That's one thing. Secondly, when a prophet comes with a message that he received from God, the Creator, uh, people are skeptical. And it wasn't something, for that was not the talk of the town that was idol worshippers. Even though originally they were believers because they were descendants of Abraham through his son, first son, Ishmael. But they drifted from monotheism and began to worship idols and they went astray in that respect. So what is the logical point to start? You start with something that sounds very strange, with people who are closest to you, who know you, who know your character, and know your truthfulness. Does that mean that the message is only to your family? Or that this is the logical point to start? Your family? And your close friends like Abu Bakr and Abu Asman, Abu Rahman, you know. But once you get people already who rally around this cause of monotheism, then obviously you try to tell people in your city. And once you get a base for that, as it did in Medina, for example, in Arabia, then you can move on to convey the message to other people. In other words, you don't just start from the top down, you have to go from, so the strategy or the stages of revelation or conveyance of the message varies without necessarily contradicting the fact that it is universal, but universal, uh, are you going to use the Twitter and uh, Facebook and uh, CNN and CFF and all of that to communicate with six billion people? You have to start and then move on. Having said that, let us look a little bit about his character. That some writers say that all prophets have a minimum of great characters. No question about that. Virtues. But within that also you find some prophets have been excelling in one trait or the other. And they make a claim that if you look carefully and fairly at the life of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his character, you will find that he combined actually the traits of the greatest traits of all of the prophets. Example, we are aware, for example, of the fortitude and immense patience against all odds of prophets like Abraham, 
naik job 